Chapter 18, Commodities and Currencies. Commodities and currencies are generally tougher markets to profit from compared to stocks and corporate bonds. Some traders make consistent profits by using technical analysis to actively manage commodity and non-cryptocurrency portfolios. But these traders generally see less volatility and realize lower percent gains than 9 to noon traders. See part 2. Some active foreign exchange trade currency traders make up for low volatilities by using leveraged debt to increase their position stakes but we already talked about why you should avoid trading on margin earlier with that said you can make strong medium term gains if you think a certain commodity industry will significantly change in the near term for example a horrendous hurricane in florida may increase fcoja price futures we will talk more about what this means soon perhaps you notice gas prices getting especially low and see potential upside in crude oil alternatively you can use currency markets to profit from your overall knowledge of worldwide political issues and country specific news as currencies quickly change value compared to one another in the long term expect worldwide news and trends to dictate commodity and currency prices because of this it is tough to predict overall future growth in commodities and currencies, and these positions are generally excluded from long-term portfolios. There are profits to be made in commodity and current traditional currency markets, but they are usually measly compared to the stock market. Rather, these exchanges are used as necessary and proper tools for global commerce. Let's start by looking at commodities. Commodities are goods that are interchangeably similar to other like quality goods no matter who produces them. Commodity prices change as the worldwide market determines value based on supply, demand, and speculation. In frequently traded exchanges, commodities have tickers followed by a rating for a pre predetermined amount of the underlying commodity. For example, FCOJA stands for A-rated frozen concentrated orange juice solids and currently trades at $1.60 a pound. Ratings generally follow simple letter ranking naming schemes to simplify your investment research. Other common commodities include corn, oats, rough rice, soybeans, rapeseed, wheat, milk, cocoa, coffee, cotton, sugar, azuka beads, lean hogs, live cattle, feeder cattle, crude oil, ethanol, natural gas, heating oil, Gulf Coast gasoline, Arbob gasoline, propane, copper, lead, zinc, tin, aluminum, nickel, cobalt, molybdenum, recycled steel, gold, platinum, palladium, silver, palm oil, rubber, wool, amber, coal, lumber, olive oil, palm oil, peanut oil, potatoes, rye, commodity tea, ambergris, bristles, butter, cashmere, feathers, goats, hide, horses, ivory, lard, musk, civet oil, pork belly, sheep, silk, sponges, tallow, whalebone, compressed hydrogen, thorium, uranium, purified tephraphthalic acid, which is used in clothing and plastic bottles. Markets naturally trade some commodities like corn more frequently than other goods, creating better active investment markets and more exchange listings. More liquid liquidity and volume keeps commodities on worldwide exchanges and ensures tight spreads for you. Since commodity markets generally operate with less public volume than equities, intraday price movements may seem abrupt at times. However, even comparatively quick movements are usually relatively small compared to 9 to noon stocks, which we'll talk more about in chapter 36. Unless there's a huge environmental report or war threat, commodity prices generally have smaller and less predictable movements day to day. For these reasons, many investors seek stick to commodities for risk diversification in down markets. See uncorrelated assets in chapter 35. For example, many flock to safe precious metals when overall an index funds start to drop significantly. However, you can also speculate in the medium term in commodities if you have a background or education in certain market. Since global supply and demand price drive global supply and demand drive price changes, you can identify macro level trends that could significantly change a commodity's immediate value. To gain a better insight into commodities volatility and long term performance history, we will soon look at the thirty plus year commodity price charts. Generally, investors find that the stable, long-term returns divvied out by index funds outperform almost all long-term commodity positions.
The market price you see when you look up at any commodity is the price the good most recently traded for in the live market. Every day, these spot prices move when farmers sell their harvest to buy manufacturing distri manufacturers, distributors, etc. You can find spot prices for most frequently traded commodities on Yahoo Finance under the Markets tab. However, these quotes rarely show you long-term performance. For this, search for specific commodities through online quote searches or through direct commodity exchanges like the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, Chicago Board of Trade, Carbon Trade Exchange, European Energy Exchange, New York Mercantile Exchange, Intercontinental Exchange, London Metal Exchange, Brazil Bolsa Baseos SA, Multi Commodity Exchange of India, Zhengzhou Commodity Exchange, Shanghai Futures Exchange, and Tokyo Commodity Exchange. Your orders flow through these exchanges when you buy or sell a commodity or futures contract. Coming soon. FCOJA's current spot price is around $1.60 per pound, with one contract representing 15,000 pounds of A-rated frozen concentrated orange juice solids. If orange juice was a stock, you could purchase it at this price and hold it like any paper asset. The only problem is that you can get you get actual orange juice solids when you buy FCOJA rather than paper or electronic stock certificates, which we'll look at more we look at more stock fulfillment in chapter 37. If you are a factory, you can purchase orange juice from the market immediately at this price per pound. The exchange you submit your order to will verify the quality and deliver the delivery of your commodity from the seller you are nearly immediately matched with. When a seller posts an order on a commodity exchange, they or the exchange guarantee the physical delivery of commodity orders. In some cases where fulfillment is extremely costly, distributors may store orders in warehouses or organize private delivery off an exchange. If you buy one lot, 15,000 pounds, of FCOJA, you'll be responsible for refrigerating and storing the solids in your own property once they are delivered. As a speculative investor, actual physical delivery and commodity storage is unideal for you. What can you do with a truckload of juice? Even for other commodities such as precious metals, actual physical possession puts you at risk for theft and other extraneous circumstances. Futures contracts are the easiest way to trade commodities without physically owning the underlying commodity. Instead of buying gold or another commodity directly, you can buy a futures contract to lock in a current price for 100 troy ounces standard size, single lot size of gold in a future time frame. If the price of gold rises any time in this predetermined time span from your future contract price, then you can sell your contract for profit because your contract purchases gold below its market price. As long as you sell your contracts, your futures contracts before their predetermined expiration dates, you will never have to physically take delivery of the underlying commodity. To short a commodity, simply sell a futures contract first, wait for price movement, and buy it back later. Let's say you grow Arabica coffee on your farm. You know your harvest will be ready in five months and should yield around 40,000 pounds of coffee beans. After looking at the historical price of coffee, you grow fearful the prices will drop from the current spot price of a dollar per pound to 70 cents per pound. ICE futures price, coffee C, Arabica coffee. To protect your crop value, you can do... You can go to a few different exchanges and find that you can get a 37,500 pound futures contract from the New York Mercantile Exchange. The value of a 37,500 pound contract at the current spot price of a dollar per pound is $37,500. However, you do not want to spend $37,500 on your contract, so you go to a broker which gives you leverage and lets you trade on margin. Because you have a great credit history with this broker, they let you enter a sell to open or short coffee position at the NYMEX after you deposit only $4,000 in a margin account. You open this position through your broker by selling a one lot coffee contract for 37,500 pounds on the NYMEX that expires in five months. The buyer on the other end of this contract is either a ready to buy supplier, a speculator thinking the price will go up, a market maker, or the actual exchange buying to create liquidity. As the price of coffee changes, daily adjustments are made to the $37,500 leverage value of your account 
at the closing price of every market day. Remember that your actual position is funded with leveraged debt and the cash deposit is only a small fraction of your $37,500 contract. As the price of coffee goes down, your short contract appreciates because you have the ability to sell coffee at a higher future price than the current spot price. Your $4,000 deposit grows to $13,375, a gain of $9,000. $375, while your actual contract value increases from $37,500 to $46,875 when coffee hits $0.75 cents after three months, a 25% gain plus $9,375. $75. Notice that your cash deposit grows more than the actual 25% gain because this was a leveraged position. When trading on margin or with leveraged options, see chapter 21, your gain or loss is the price movement of your leveraged position added to or subtracted from your initial margin deposit. Since you made $9,375 from this leveraged position so far, you have an unrealized, unsold, and still in the live market gain of $9,375 divided by $4,000 times 100 equals 274.375%. Not bad. Leveraged positions present huge upside, but they also create huge downside. Exclusively in the commodities future contract market, your account is actually credited $9,375 from the commodity exchange, even though you have not sold your contract that still has two months until expiration. The buyer on the other end of this contract was debited $9,375 from the exchange in real time since they now have to pay a higher than market price for the coffee you sell them. In a traditional stock trade, you do not receive money in your account until you cover your position in a short trade or sell your position in a long trade. We will talk more about order types in chapter 19. In essence, you do not gain or lose any money until you close out part or all of your position in whatever stock, ETF, etc. that you buy or short. You do not pay taxes on unrealized gains in the stock market at the end of the year according to capital gains tax rates because you have not received money from the sale of your asset. However, commodities futures differ significantly from equity market positions because any gains or losses are credited to your or debited to your account at the end of each trading day. You can still sell your contract at any time before the last trading day as specified in your futures contract, but you will see actual cash flow in and out of your account every day rather than only seeing your position value change on paper. The government considers regulated futures contracts as section 1256 contracts taxed using a 60-40 gain or loss split. Other section 1256 contracts include foreign currency contracts, non-equity options, dealer equity options, and dealer securities future contracts. With this special classification, long-term capital gains rates are applied to 60% of a contract's year-end losses or gains, and short-term gains rates are applied to 40%. You report your year-end futures and all of the Section 1256 contract positions to the IRS through, uh, through IRS Form 6781. This form looks at the market value of your position and applies the 60-40 tax split to gains and losses. Note that the wash sale rule discussed earlier does not apply to Section 1256 contracts because they are marked to market. Other non-convertible Section 1256 contracts include foreign currency contracts, non-equity options, dealer equity options, and security futures contracts. You will simply copy your gains and losses from your broker issued Form 1099-B to pay your split taxes on these contracts. After calculating your tax liability on unrealized Section 1256 contract gains or losses, you report your tax liability on Form 1040 Supplement Schedule D. The Schedule D is also where you state your capital gains and losses as reported by your brokerage through 1099-B statements. Just follow the steps and calculations from Form 6781 and Schedule D and you will be sending in your tax return in no time. Experience makes these forms go by quicker as you learn which parts you can skip and simply leave blank since they do not apply to your return. Before we go back to our coffee example, let's recap one quick tax law. As you know, if you hold the stock through the end of the year, you will not have to pay taxes on your unrealized gains or losses. However, the tax benefits extends to qualified nonprofits when you donate equities with unrealized gains to charity without 
you or the charity paying any capital gains taxes. You can donate and account for the full value of a stock donations with unrealized gains without you or the recipient paying the IRS any capital gains taxes. If you're purely a speculative trader like most, then you may decide to cash out your short coffee position now, realizing your significant gain. To do this, you have your broker submit a buy to open or long futures contract order for 37,500 pounds of coffee. Futures contracts use the same order types of stocks we will talk about stock options order types in chapter 19. The biggest difference between trading futures contracts and stocks is that futures contracts have a tick size, minimum amount that a contract can move in value, are marked to market at the end of the day, expire by certain dates, have certain required order sizes, deal much more with margin, and can generally be traded 24 hours a day. Short and long futures contract trades simply change the owner of the contract to or terminate the contract in exchange for gains and losses if both parties agree to this option. A less likely outcome since these two-sided contracts are zero-sum trades that always have a loser. Nonetheless, exchanges backed up back up contracts in the market to ensure you get liquidity through automated order matching systems. Let's say you decide to hold your contracts after this initial downtrend. When the price of coffee goes up, your short term your short contract depreciates. Your actual contract value decreases $9,375 from $37,500 to $28,108.25, 25% loss, while your $4,000 deposit shrinks to $5,375, a 234.375% loss when coffee hits $1.25 during your last two holding months. Notice that this 234.375% loss mirrors your earlier 234.375% gain when coffee went down 25%. Since you theoretically sold the contract betting the price would go down, but the price ended higher, you lost 37500 minus 28125 equals $9,375. Your account has a negative balance because this trade on margin, you made this trade on margin and lost more than your initial margin deposit. In other words, you made a bet with someone else's money and lost it. Now we start to see the dangers of trading on margin. You can lose more than you bet. If you cannot pay back your debt to the lending broker through cash or asset liquidation, your debt will be accrue interest like a loan taken out to invest. By avoiding margin trading in any asset class with money you do not have, you ensure your financial security and protect long-term growth prospects with intelligent investments. In commodities markets specifically, you can back up your margin positions with expected crop yields as a producer. However, this practice will still expose you to disastrous risk if your harvest unexpectedly decreases, leaving you literal collateral to cover potential margin losses. In all capital markets, only risk what you're willing to lose. Always prepare for the worst so that you can work for your best. Sticking to your overall trading strategy and waiting out for long-term gains or taking quick short-term ones. Never be afraid to cut a loss, but always make sure you understand why a position went the wrong way for you and ask yourself if you were right to follow your strategy and just got unlucky. Everyone loses no matter their strategy. Stick to your principles and learn more about the markets through experience. In our coffee farming hedging example, we hedged against the, risk that, against the risk that coffee prices would decrease and lower our harvest return by opening a short futures contract. Even though we lost $9,375 when coffee's stock price went from $1 to $1.25 the, over the course of our five-month contract, we can still sell our 37,500 uh, 37, pounds of Arabian coffee at a dollar per pound. Additionally, we can sell the remaining 2,500 pounds at the current 25 cent higher spot uh, current spot price in open market for $3,125. At the beginning of this five month period, we analyzed the market trends and grew fearful that coffee would drop to 70 cents a pound. Had our prediction come true, we would be able to sell our beans for much more than the current market price at the end of our harvest. Although we missed some potential gains in this example, we also guaranteed a market for our coffee that locked in our expected harvest revenue, keeping us normal, helping us normalize and protect our farming income in a volatile commodity market. 
Once our contract term ends and we harvest our coffee, we fulfill our contract by delivering our beans to the contract buyer. This buyer may have changed hands in the exchanging market up until the last trading days specified in our contract. Additionally, the buyer may ask us to settle a contract in cash to realize a gain or loss before the last trading day. If we settle profits or losses with cash, we can then simply sell our beans in the open market at a spot price. The exchange we sell on is responsible for reviewing and verifying the quality and quantity of our beans or any other commodities. Commodity futures are extremely useful for farmers and factories who want to lock in a market price for materials to minimize price volatility risk. You can trade commodities as an investor to diversify your portfolios, making plays on trends you see in commodity market price actions, and profit from volatility and active technical analysis, which we will talk more about diversification in uh, chapter 35. To trade commodities, use the following order format for future contracts. Order is underlying asset symbol plus month code plus one or two year digit. Uh, the month codes from January to December are F G H J K L M N Q U B X Z, and for spot cash trade it's A zero if applicable. As you might notice, these letters correlate to the QWERTY keyboard layout, increasing in order as the months pass by. After the initial five months, the month codes follow horizontally lines across the keyboard to streamline trading. Additionally, the month code letters are not easily confused with numbers, look-alike letters, or like sounding letters. Using these codes shortens the time taken to find a contract, enter an order, and execute a trade. Here are a couple examples. Silver, December 2019 contract, SIZ9, where SI is silver, Z represents the expiration date December and 9 represents the expiration year 2019. Or two-year treasury September 2018 contract, TUU8, where TU represents two-year treasury notes, U represents the expiration month September, and 8 represents the expiration year 2018. Many other secondary market futures contracts exist for a wide range of underlying assets or derivatives. However, many of these futures such as treasury note contracts, serve as a more complicated and tax-involved means to profit from movements in an underlying asset. Try to stick with direct assets exclusively if available to simplify your overall portfolio, taxes, accounting, trade orders, and more. You may even realize tax advantages to trade in underlying assets as opposed to derivative futures contracts since you can qualify for full long-term capital gains and ignore mark-to-market taxes on unrealized gains. Alternatively, futures contracts can help lower your active trading tax liabilities if you constantly trade indices or perhaps foreign exchange futures rather than the underlying indices or currencies by applying the earlier discussed 60-40 tax split to your profits rather than the straight uh, short-term capital gains. Major commodity markets generally make poor long-term investments. To understand this viewpoint, let's look at the historical performance of silver, gold, the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and the Wilshire Large Cap Index. The Wilshire is a total return index, which includes dividends. The index tracks the 750 largest market cap companies in the Wilshire 5000 total market index and assumes that you reinvest dividends. Then we have our chart and we see from highest to lowest final percent return, we see the Wilshire large cap, Dow Jones Industrial, the S&P 500, gold, and silver. And the Wilshire, I mean, all the indices basically just long-term compounding growth over time in the image. But with the uh, commodities, you see a decent spike after the 08 crash, but not consistent long-term growth and essentially just a decline since then. Not to say it can't go up, but if you look at trends, it's not as reliable. This chart analyzes asset performance since 1985. Notice that in the 2008 subprime mortgage crash, metal prices rallied. In market downturns, investors tend to purchase safer assets like gold or bonds, whereas they buy riskier speculative investments in upturns. Buying gold futures contracts during the 2008 crash would have yielded a great short-term gain, but this was also a terrific time to invest in stocks for the long term. According to this data, gold increased around 91% at its peak 
from the time the stock market bottomed, while the DJI increased around 85% in the same time period. However, gold peaked and then reversed in 2011, whereas the DJI kept increasing, now yielding around a 271% gain from the buy gold bottoms. Note that silver increased 223% from the market bottom to its peak too. Silver has historically been much more volatile than gold. In the short term, you can most definitely outperform the market through futures contracts, but you should try to time them as informed research trades rather than long-term investments. Many ETFs track commodity prices alongside other baskets of less traditional investments in well-diversified portfolios containing many underlying assets from across a niche market spectrum. We will talk more about diversification in chapter 35. You can use these tools to invest in commodities without going through contract hassles. Here are more historical commodity performance examples comparing farmable, extractable, and precious commodities to the S&P 500, the most conservative of the three major U.S. indices. And so we see our graph, and it looks at the value of a $100 investment from 1985 to current. And from highest to lowest final return, we see the S&P 500, $1,584.49, sugar, $304.75, soybeans, $151.58, wheat, $143.44, oats, $139.82, corn, $134.34, cotton, $115.64, orange juice, $88.53, and coffee, $77.52. So you're looking at essentially, you know, 20 years of 20 plus years of data and uh, you know some of these commodities went down over that time period uh, other ones notably sugar had big ups big downs so that was something you could definitely use technical analysis or market research to trade but if you look at the long term none of those came close to the market average index fund performance and that's just a no-brainer investment you don't have to think about technical analysis timing um, it's just all in that chart with farm commodities versus the S&P 500 Alongside that, we see extracted commodities versus the S&P 500. So from highest to lowest final return, we see the S&P 500 at $1,584.49, uh, Brent crude oil at $3,057.33, WTI crude oil at $301.32, crude oil at $258.78, and natural gas at $256.55. That's the growth of a $100 investment from the beginning of chartable time. And you can see over the long term, definitely increases, definitely decreases. It's just a general reflection of the market sentiment for oil prices, whereas stocks have consistently grown as a compounding long-term investment. Uh, then we see precious metals versus the S&P 500. Uh, from highest to lowest final return, we see the S&P 500 at $1,584.49, palladium at $249.93, gold at $397.49, rhodium at $300.73, copper at $283.79, platinum at $249.93, and silver $203.52. And you look at the graph, you see the same thing where you have individual commodities that uh, can infrequently have large spikes, but in the long term, it's much less growth compared to overall market indices. For a frame of reference in the above graphs, please note that $100 in 1985 has the same purchasing power in as uh, $239.70 today in 2018. So a lot of those really were just stagnant. You can significantly outperform the market with riskier commodity investments in the short term, but all of these volatile commodities, many failing to even beat inflation, underperform the American powerhouse economy in the long term. As markets keep growing and consumers keep spending, stocks continue to expand and create wealth for shareholders through dividends and capital gains. Equities are the true key to asset growth. With commodities, remember that these investments reflect the price change due to supply and demand.
A bar of gold will always be a simple bar of gold, whereas an index fund is made up of corporations built and run by people working every day to increase shareholder value. With this said, keep commodities in your trading repertoire. If you spend time searching for setups, you can most definitely find them. These positions, especially in down markets, are an excellent way to diversify your overall portfolio alongside traditional swing trades if you only want to put a medium amount of time into managing your assets. We will further explore diversification in chapter 35. Transitioning from commodities to currencies, we enter a 24-hour market that moves trillions of dollars every single day. Currency, foreign exchange, or forex markets simply reflect changing political and social values in a country's currency, ignoring cryptocurrencies. These exchanges are necessary to facilitate international travel and commerce, and they create highly traded speculative markets affected by innate currency inflation and deflation. Because of their volatility, Foreign currencies rarely act as reliable long-term investments. Rather, many use these assets alongside commodities as safe havens for cash in bad markets. You can take advantage of both down markets and increased worldwide political tensions by swing trading foreign currencies. By timing these markets, you can make profits with an minimal amount with minimal research, playing off instincts, worldwide news, and your overall technical analysis skill set developed in part two. The Daily percentage price movements in Forex currencies are generally much lower than those of 9 to noon stocks. You can use technical analysis to find winning positions in Forex stocks just as you can with most stocks. However, percent returns in Forex and some particularly volatile stocks generally pale in comparison to 9 to noon gains. I compare currencies to actively managed stocks because they are generally much more volatile investments than diversified stock portfolios as shown below and they therefore require more active monitoring. To get an idea of the sideways currency exchange markets, let's look at seven major currency trading pairs and the US dollar index as measured of U.S. dollar value relative to a basket of foreign currencies from 1990 to today. And then we see uh, pretty much all these currencies are just going sideways, up and down, up and down, up and down. From highest to lowest final percent change, we see the Japanese NEN to U.S. dollar, the Swiss franc to U.S. dollar, the Australian dollar to U.S. dollar, the Euro to U.S. dollar, the U.S. dollar index, the Canadian dollar to U.S. dollar, the British pound to U.S. dollar, and the Mexican peso to U.S. dollar. So... Overall, not a lot of growth potential, just ups and downs. In general, these markets move sideways, particularly slowly compared to equity markets, especially due to economic release slowdowns, holidays, seasonal factors, and overall currency indecision. We see large movements in some currencies, but these are relatively small trades based on macroeconomic factors. Though there is no clear-cut better investment vehicle for active trading, you'll see significantly stronger, predictable, predictably timely setups in 9 to noon stocks rather than Forex. 9 to noon stocks may move hundreds of percentage points in a day, whereas foreign currencies may move a few percentage points in comparison. Keep Forex in your mind as a swing trading option for commo like commodities, but focus on equities for asset accumulation. See Chapter 36. For reference, here is the previous currency price data from 1990 compared to the SP500. And as you can see in this chart, it just pales. It's a, it's a complete blowout of the park. The S&P just absolutely crushes it in growth compared to these currencies because they really are just going sideways most of the time.